WDSU News Hot Seat. I'm Travers Mackle. Tonight we're continuing our hot seat debates focusing on the race for St. Bernard Parish President. Now we all know St. Bernard, if you take a look at this, is clearly an important suburb of the city of New Orleans with a growing population. The reason why this seat is open is because longtime parish president Guy McGinnis is barred by term limits from seeking re-election. He was in office for eight years for two full terms. Four people have qualified to run, all Republicans, all here right now with us tonight. They are Kerry Calais, Wayne Landry, Emile Pelletieri, and Louis Pomez. Thank you all for being here. We're going to start with opening statements. Ms. Calais, we start with you. You have 60 seconds. Good evening. My name is Carrie Calais, and I'm running to be the next parish president of St. Bernard. I'm the best choice for this position because I believe I have the qualifications, involvement, the experience, and the relationships that are necessary to fulfill this position. I am, believe that I'm the only candidate that can say that they have all four of those qualifications. I'm a lifelong resident of St. Bernard. I'm a graduate of Archbishop Hannon High School, and I have a bachelor's degree in political science. For the last 20 years, I've been a managing partner of a multi-million dollar corporation, and I've been involved in St. Bernard's civic community for long before I've been elected. I have been chairwoman of the St. Bernard Chamber of Commerce. I have founded Leadership St. Bernard. I'm secretary treasurer of the Lu Save Louisiana Coalition, and I'm a board member of the Nunez Community College Foundation. I have the experience of serving as councilwoman at large for the last eight years, and I believe that has given me the experience to know the challenges and the opportunities that St. Bernard faces. And I look forward to continuing to move forward for St. Bernard. All right, thank you. Mr. Landry, you have 60 seconds. Well, thank you. I'm Wayne Landry. I've lived in the parish my entire life. Along with new residents, I've enjoyed a quality of life that made St. Bernard great. That quality of life is now being attacked by politicians that are serving themselves and not the people. As your parish president, I will oppose the port, I'll protect your property values, make us safe, and I'll restore the quality of life that made us great once again. There are a lot of other issues beside the port. We have coastal erosion issues, we have commercial fishermen that have freshwater diversions, sediment diversions, killing that industry. We have a lot of problems with our fire department that we have to get straight with employee retention problems and, and other issues in the parish that are just as important as this port issue. All I can tell you is, look, my education is in public administration, minored in history, accounting, French. Um, most of you know me. Most of you know I'm going to keep my word. I'm going to work hard if you elect me. I appreciate your help in this election. Mr. Pelletieri, and let me apologize, I did mispronounce your name when I introduced you. So, Mr. Pelletieri, you have 60 seconds. That's fine. Thanks, Travis. I'm Emil Pelletieri. I'm running for parish president. I've been a lifelong resident. My people came to St. Bernard in the 30s. Um, have my own business. Been uh, involved, engaged in community many, many years. Santa Ana Bayou, over 20 years. We did a food bank for over 10 years. I'm currently a member of ARC of, of Greater New Orleans uh, Executive Board, and um, I feel that politicians just have not been um, straightforward with us and not engaged in a, um, with what we really want to see happen. They're disconnected. All right, thank you very much. Mr. Pomez, you can wrap us up. You have 60 seconds to make an opening well, first statement. First of all, I want to thank WDSU and you, Travis, for giving us this opportunity this evening to, to, to come out and tell us a little bit something about us. Um, I'm Louis Pomez. I'm a lifelong le resident of St. Bernard Parish. I am one of the candidates for parish president. For the past 40 years, I have worked in or with every department in government, including administration and field operation. I am the chief of field operations and for public works. In my career, I have worked very close with six parish presidents, 42 councilmen, and too many police juries to count. No one knows the in and out of parish government like I do. 40 years of experience. All right. Thank you very much. We're going to start this question with you, Mr. Landry. 60 seconds or one minute. You mentioned it in your opening statement. If elected, how would you handle the lawsuit trying to keep the Port of New Orleans out of St. Bernard Parish? Well, first of all, let me tell you two quick reasons why I'm opposed to Port. Number one, 
It displaces residents who have been there for generations, and, and that would disrupt them. Second, it would disrupt our community with traffic issues, et cetera, et cetera. As far as the litigation that's out there, we need to assemble a team that can work closely with the other activists right now, like SOS and others, to be able to put a team of experts together in this field to move that whole thing forward. Signing the petition is one thing, but getting action done is a completely another thing. And that's where I, my value is coming in, is being able to navigate through the, the, the legal part of it with some help from other government agencies. All right, same question, Mr. Pelletieri. In one minute, if elected, how would you handle the lawsuit trying to keep the Port of New Orleans out of St. Bernard? We support the groups that already have lawsuits, do whatever we can um, to move it forward. The um, infrastructure has the potential to be another Mr. Go. They knew it was a bad idea when they did it. They did it anyway. This is the same thing. It has the potential to impact our environment uh, negatively. All right. Mr. Pomez, same question. The Port of New Orleans comes to St. Bernard. It's going to destroy the quality of life throughout the whole parish, not just in the area that they're going to build this port. Uh, it's going to create a lot of uh, environmental issues with, with St. Bernard Parish. Uh, we're going to have approximately 17, 1,800 trucks a day running through there. Um, it's probably going to be somewhere around 300, 350 train rails going out every day. Uh, I'll do everything in my power to, to fight against the port coming into St. Bernard Parish. I, I've been working in roads and, and for 40 years with government, and I can tell you the roadways in St. Bernard Parish will not stand 17, 1800, 18 wheelers coming through every day. All right, thank you. We're going to wrap this up with you, Ms. Calais. What is your plan in 60 seconds if elected? So I'm the only candidate for this position that's voted publicly and on the record against this project. It's going back as far as 2021. And that stood with our district attorney following the lawsuit against Port Nola, ensuring that St. Bernard Port has sole jurisdiction in our parish. That means that the agreement with Port Nola should be declared null and void. I believe that there's two ways that this project can be stopped. That's through these lawsuits that have been filed or through the permanent process with the Corps. The EIS process with the Corps is a process that I'm very familiar with. It's the same process that we have gone through with the Mid-Breton Sediment Diversion, which I have been extremely involved in. We understand what it takes to get through that process, and I believe because of our efforts, that project will never be constructed in St. Bernard Parish. I hope to continue to work through that process and make sure that all of the concerns of St. Bernard's residents are raised through that, that EIS process. We've also hired a consultant group that we hope will bring out all of the issues and overturn every stone that needs to be to ensure that the damage or the strain that this project puts in our community is brought out. All right, thank you very much. Mr. Pelletier, we're gonna start this one with you, another 60 second answer. What is your plan for the continued tornado recovery in Araby if you're elected? Um, we have streamlined permits, uh, assure that whoever's working has insurance, make sure our um, residents uh, don't get taken to the cleaners. We need a, um, for permits, we need to make sure that at a, when an event happens, if you don't have an uh, 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 you know, um, occupational license, you're not getting one. You're not gonna come here in our community when there's an event and take work from our, our local contractors. All right, thank you very much. 60 seconds, Mr. Pomez, if elected, what is your plan for the continued recovery after those tornadoes touched down in Araby last year? <clears throat> I've always been a great part in 40 years of my career in government on, on the recovery of St. Bernard Parish. Uh, Hurricane Katrina hit, you know, it was a great part of the cleanup. I was a great part of the recovery, uh, bringing back our people to St. Bernard. The night of the tornado was the first set of boots on the ground, myself and my team. We didn't leave until the, the entire grounds was cleaned up. Uh, we had a, a lot of help from, from our administration and our council of, of getting people back in their homes uh, and getting people back together. All right, thank you very much, Ms. Calais. Same question, if elected, what is your plan for the continued recovery in Araby? So after uh, the tornado hit, you know, St. Bernard is no, is no stranger to natural disasters. You know, we were able to, you know, because of the team we have built across St. Bernard, we were able to have boots on the ground, like Mr. Promes said, you know, within minutes of that, of that tornado hitting. 
because of our relationship and our, our ability to bring a group together, our sheriff, our leaders, our you know, hardworking guys and our road crew were out there and were able to clear the streets and get our residents to safety. Uh, we worked in the aftermath with Public Service Commissioner Scrimetta and our energy crews to make sure that power was restored in record time. Uh, I worked with Councilman McCluskey to set up a one-stop shop in the St. Bernard Council office to make sure that residents were able to reach the resources that they need and that the volunteer groups were able to be deployed as soon as possible. Uh, as parish president, I will make sure that we maintain our contingency fund so that we can get on the ground right after disasters happen and then put together a task force so that when these disasters happen, we can regain that money from FEMA or from the state to make sure that we're ready when nature strikes again. All right, Mr. Landry, 60 seconds. The question to repeat it again is, if elected, what is your plan for the continued tornado recovery in Araby? For the continued tornado recovery. Okay. So right now, we have a lot of residents still, some are actually still displaced. Some still have uh, difficulties working through insurance issues. Um, that's where the, the power of the president's office can, can be of some assistance. <clears throat> Excuse me. What we need to do is seek out those and create a little uh, committee, if you will, of people to help them work with the insurance commissioner, help them get their funds that they need to put their lives back together. That's on some of them. On the other ones, um, there, and there are many different issues for the different people, but on any issues that they have, we as parish government need to use the power of that government to help them work through those issues. All right, Mr. Pomez, we're gonna start this one with you. It's gonna be 30 seconds this time. What would your plan be if elected to reopen firehouses in the eastern half of the parish, places like Delacroix that have been closed for several months? <clears throat> My entire career here, we have always had 12 stations open in St. Bernard Parish, and there's no reason today why we should have seven or eight open. I think we should have all of our stations open, all 12. Uh, that would be one of my first issues that I would jump on to make sure that we can open up Station 11 and Station 12 with fully manned power. All right, Ms. Kelly, same question to you in 30 seconds. If elected, what would be your plan to get those firehouses in the eastern half of the parish reopened? So we're currently undergoing a, a study with our you know, chief of our fire department to see how we can best serve all of our residents in St. Bernard. You know, as a lifelong resident of eastern St. Bernard, it's absolutely important that we make sure that those citizens are protected. It's an it's a interesting and different situation in the eastern part of the parish because it's so spread out that it's a challenge to make sure that their fire protection is, is you know, as the same as it is across the rest of the parish. So yes, it's critical that we open up these fire stations. It's critical that it's fully funded. All right, Mr. Landry, 30 seconds, same question. What would your plan be? I, I've studied the budget. We have enough money to operate those facilities. That's not our problem. We don't need a study to tell us what the problem is. We don't have enough staff. We have to develop a better employee recruitment and a much better employee retention program. If we can do that, we'll have the staff and use the money that we have available and staff them all. But it won't happen in one day. You've got to recruit the staff. All right, Mr. Pelletieri, same question in 30 seconds. What would your plan be for those firehouses in the eastern half? Well, like Wayne said, I think we have enough money to do what we need to do. It's not just about the fire safety. They first responders. They're there for wrecks. They're there for any kind of injury. There's a lot of boating, uh, watercraft uh, activities going on. Something can easily happen. We need to have our guys out there. It's all right. not just about fire. All right, let's get to some fun ones here. Some yes or no ones really quickly. We'll start this one with you, Mr. Cal Ms. Calais. Yes or no, you're a Republican. Do you support the GOP-backed candidate for governor, Jeff Landry? Uh, I, I, I support whoever is going to be you know, the best candidate for Louisiana. All right, Mr. Landry, yes or no, do you support the GOP-backed candidate, Jeff Landry? Well, absolutely, because his last name. <laughs> no relation, though. Right? No relation, yeah. Exactly. All right, Mr. Pelletieri, do you support the GOP back candidate, Jeff Landry? I'm on a fence with him. Okay. And Mr. Pomez, yes or no? 100%. 100%. Here's an interesting one. We'll start with you, Mr. Landry. No relation to this guy, I think. Yes or no, would you support former President Donald Trump if he's the GOP nominee for president? I can't say yes or no. I'd say absolutely. Okay. Mr. Absolutely. Absolutely. I support the GOP candidate for Congress. All right, we'll president. start this one with you. Yes or no, it was a controversial issue in the legislature. Do you support the death penalty in Louisiana? Yes. 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 
All right. Let's talk about crime. We'll start this with you, Mr. Pomez. In 30 seconds, how would you work with the sheriff to keep crime out of St. Bernard Parish? <clears throat> well, I had an opportunity to work side by side with the sheriff for about 16 years in a part-time position. Um, I think the sheriff does a really good job, uh, the DA's office, the judges, I think they all do a good job on, on um, keeping crime under control in St. Bernard Parish. So uh, anything I can do to help, we're, we're going to be right on board with them. All right, Mr. Ms. Calais. 30 seconds, how would you work with the sheriff to keep crime out of St. Bernard Parish? So we've had a great relationship with the, with the sheriff over the last eight years, and we will continue that. We will continue to make sure the department is fully funded. I think that we need to look at increasing our, our crime cameras across St. Bernard Parish, making sure that we have footage of anything that happens in St. Bernard. I also think that we have a drug crisis in St. Bernard Parish, and I've been working with the, parish, with the parish president and the sheriff's department and the DA to form an opioid tax force to make sure that our children are kept on the right path and that the drug crisis does not affect our crime in St. Bernard. All right, 30 seconds. How would you work with the sheriff if elected, Mr. Landry? Well, parish government is a funding mechanism for the sheriff's office. I would ensure that we not only keep that in place, but try to enhance it where we can by being more efficient with the other monies in government. Um, as far as the, the Sheriff Pullman, he does a really good job. His deputy does, a they do a really good job. And I think we have to look at other issues in the parish like mental health and, and drug abuse and try and assist our community get a little bit more cohesive with the Sheriff's office. All right, Mr. Pelletieri in 30 seconds, what would your plan be to work with the Sheriff? Always work the sheriff. They got a uh, trusty program. They've always been helpful for us, whatever we're working on. Um, I would like to see uh, um, a more proactive approach to maybe the speeders. We have some crazy drivers, and it gives us a chance to engage them in maybe their bad elements uh, that we can stop some of this stuff. All right, we got to get through this one quickly. So we're going to do 20 seconds here. I hate to shortchange it, but it's an important one. Ms. Kelly, in 20 seconds, what is your plan for economic development to get more business to St. Bernard Parish? So we have to make sure that businesses are able to move through our process quickly. They need to make sure that permits are easy. We may to make sure that parish government is assisting in any way that they can. We don't need to be a detriment to businesses coming here. We need to make sure that we're an asset. And I think if we streamline that process, we can ensure that businesses want to come to St. Bernard. All right, 20 seconds, Mr. Landry. I hate to do it to you in that quick of a time, but in 20 seconds, what's your plan for economic well, development? Well, first thing, we'd have to stop the port so other businesses would come to the parish. That's number one. Second thing we need to do is be more efficient in government, as she said, the, the permit process and and all the other red tape that goes along with trying to start a business. All right, Mr. Pelletieri, same thing in 20 seconds. I'm always for slow growth, not reckless, um, throw money at everything. I think part of the problem is government in general is addicted to spending. All right, and Mr. Pomez, in 20 seconds, what's your plan? I think Mr. Landry covered that. Uh, the first thing we have to do is to make sure that that port doesn't come in and destroy St. Bernard Paris uh, before we can uh, bring in any other business into St. Bernard. But I would be more than glad to uh, get us some liaisons to get out and hustle some more uh, business places to come in St. Bernard Paris. All right, we got some other questions we're not going to be able to get to. I wish we could have talked regional partnerships as well as some other things on crime and drug addiction. But unfortunately, we are running close to our time here. So we're going to do closing statements. Mr. Pomez, you wrapped this up last time. You get to start us off. You have 30 seconds to make a closing statement. <clears throat> I'm the only candidate in this race that can hit the ground running with a proven track record of getting things done. When disaster strikes, hurricanes, floods, tornadoes, myself and my team are the first set of boots on the ground, and the last ones to leave. There is no other candidate in this race with my background, knowledge, or experience St. Bernard, I humbly ask for your vote, October 14. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Pelletieri, you have 30 seconds to make a closing remark. Yeah, uh, again, thank you for having us here. Closing um, statement is government, for the most part, runs by itself. You need to have uh, guidance in a certain direction, and it, my direction for the parish is to... Uh, a safe, happy place for us to raise our kids. All right. I think everybody wants that. Mr. Landry, you have 30 seconds to make a closing remark. Thank you, Travis, for having us tonight. Um, at the end of the day, a few years back, I ran for the council to build a hospital. The hospital's there. I delivered. It's saving lives right now. If elected, I'm going to deliver again as parish president. We need a president that can work 
with government agencies, navigate through those government agencies, and handle big budgets, not somebody that reads off of a paper. We need somebody that knows what they're doing and can shoot from the hip and get things done. I'm that guy. St. Bernard Parish, I need your help to win this election. Vote for Wayne Landry, 52. All right. Thank you very much. And Mr. Mrs. Calais, you have 30 seconds to wrap us up. Thank you. Uh, when we came into office in 2016, we had a deficit budget. We had a hospital that was $37 million in debt. We had one coastal project and one new construction permit for the whole year. And we had an image that was not reflective of the good citizens of St. Bernard. Since then, we have balanced our budget, saved our hospital, done $1 billion of coastal restoration work, have become the fastest growing parish in our nation, and have developed a reputation of professionalism across our region. I don't want to see us go backwards, and I'm running for parish president to see that continue forward. All right, Carrie Kelly, Wayne Landry, Emil Pelletieri, my apology for missaying your name <laughs> in the beginning, and Louis Pomez. Thank you all for being here. Good luck to everybody. I know all of you all are well known in St. Bernard Parish. Election Day coming up in October. You can see this entire hot seat segment starting Monday morning on our website at WDSU.com. <laughs>